Hi guys, Mr. Ruffle Waffles here. Today I'll be showing you how to build and upgrade all four of the elemental gauntlets in Ancient Evil. But in order to build all four of those gauntlets, you're going to need a dormant hand. There are an absurd number of spawn locations for these things, and so I'm going to show you as many as I know in this video, and then I'll also list any that I miss in the description down below. For all these spawn points, you'll either have to shoot or melee the dirt pile, rock pile, or urn in order to get the dormant hand from inside. You can tell if it's spawned there or not because there'll be some purple lights kind of floating around above it. Note that orange Oracle will actually give you hints to where your dormant hand locations are. I'll annotate each location that I show you with the corresponding message that Oracle gives you pointing you in that direction. That way, if you hear Oracle say where the arrow splits the road, you know exactly where to look. We're going to start off in the Stoa of Athenians. If you look down below this statue, there is a vase which can be a spawn point. Then below this statue, there's another vase that can be a spawn point as well in your game. Coming down further and on the left hand side, you'll find a pile of rocks which can be a spawn point right next to the fallen statesman there. That's a spawn in my game, but it might not be in yours. In front of the gaze of Zeus, there is another possible spawn just on the right hand side here. It'll be a dirt pile that you have to melee in order to get your part from. This bull here can have one behind it around this podium that it is on. Then behind me, we've got the one that I mentioned before, the arrow splitting the road. That's going to be just here, a pile of rocks for you to melee. Then coming up the slope, you'll see some purple blossom. On the right hand side on this slope, there is another possible spawn point. Then if we come further up here, inside one of the Prima Materia kind of crystals, you can find another possible spawn. There'll be a little shard that you can break with a melee and that will contain another dormant hand. Then if you come along here and take a left, you'll find another possible vase for you to break just on this green box. That's going to be all the spawns that I know in the kind of top level part of the map. But we've got Hades or the underground or the underworld or whatever you want to call it to explore as well. We're going to kick things off right where we spawn in. There's a possible spawn right here. As you can see, I have that one in my game. Just melee it to get it out of the pile of rocks. There's another possible spawn just here in the kind of water and around the water. Then if we head down the slope here and kind of arc left, you'll find two spawns in this room. One is going to be right next to the water wheel, and that's a spawn that I have in my game, as you can see. And another spawn is going to be on the right hand side of the room on this workbench. That's going to be an urn for you to break, by the way. Then if we head further down, you'll find another spawn next to this Koshka wall by. This will be where one of the cages is in your game. It's not here for me because I'm recording in mutations. Then if we arc to the right hand side this time, you'll find another spawn in an urn once again that you can break open. Then we're going to head to the top of the center of the world. That's going to be to the left or the right of the teleporter there. So just look for a spawn on the floor. Then if we head down to the left of the shrine of Ouroboros, we should be able to find another spawn point as a pile of dirt. Then if we head towards the trap, you should be able to find another one of those Prima Materia crystal spawns. So you can break that open and get your part from it. And there'll be a third one of those coming up right here next to the Titan. It's where the Titan is pointing. There'll be another crystal for you to break and inside you can find a potential part. Then if you head up the slope here, you can find what I believe is the final spawn point. But again, any that I've missed, I will list in the description down below. Now that you've seen all those spawns, I want to give you some context about these things. All four will spawn in in your game at the same time. And you can have one player in your game if you're playing in co-op be told by the oracle that their dormant hand is in one place and that person can pick up someone else's dormant hand which oracle is telling them is somewhere else like you can mix and match there isn't really anything special about each dormant hand it's just that there are four on the map and there are four gauntlets you need to build that's about it you can do it in any order it doesn't matter at all in this video i'm going to start off with gaia Gaia's upgrade is going to be at the bottom of this slope here, and what you're going to want to do is bring your dormant hand to the shrine, hold square, and begin the mini lockdown. It will lock you in place, just like it does with all the gauntlets, and then after about 15 seconds, you will be freed, and you'll be able to use the gauntlet of Gaia. You need to bring this gauntlet to three bushes around the map, which contain jangling crystals of Prima Materia. As you can see, one of the bushes is up this slope just here. What I'm going to do when I get there is shoot the crystals, there are going to be three of them, with the gauntlet, and each time I shoot one, it's going to explode, and once they've all been shot, a sapling will emerge from the bush below me, and I'll be able to pick it up and run it back down to the Shrine of Gaia. 
You can't sprint while you're doing this. You can't jump. It's a little bit awkward. The player model, I think, looks pretty hilarious, but you just need to walk the sapling back to the shrine and then hold square on it. You'll then need to repeat this process for the other two bushes. One of the bushes can be found just here. Same thing happening again, shooting the three crystals, getting a sapling and returning it to the shrine. And then this third bush right here has the exact same going for it. Shoot the crystals, get the sapling, return it to the shrine. You'll then be able to teleport into Gaia's little challenge. You'll be on a rock and you'll have to ground slam in three different kind of pathways. It's extremely easy, this one. It's nowhere near as hard as Sharon, for example, which can be a little bit fiddly. And so as long as you just keep ground slamming along those three lines, you should be A-OK -okay, and you'll have your Gaia upgrade done in no time. The second gauntlet we'll look at in this video is the Gauntlet of Hamira, also known as the Light Gauntlet. Bring a dormant hand to the Shrine of Hamira. You'll need to start your lockdown and then after about 15 seconds, it will complete and you'll be able to wield the gauntlet, but in its unupgraded form. With this gauntlet, we're going to shoot three mirrors around the map. They're small bronze discs, and each one needs to be oriented correctly before we shoot it with the gauntlet. This first mirror here, as you can see, I'm rotating with a regular bullet weapon, and then I'm firing my gauntlet into it, and it's reflecting off this crystal and into a cup. If I run over to the cup and I melee it with my gauntlet, I will absorb the charge that was in the cup, and the process then is simple. You just have to run that charge back to the Shrine of Hamira. This is going to happen with both the other mirrors as well. Here's another mirror. We're going to be shooting it with a bullet gun to rotate it so that it's got the correct alignment, and then we're going to be firing at it with our gauntlet and bouncing some energy into another cup. Then we'll be meleeing the cup, running all the way through to the Shrine of Hamira, and then dropping off that charge by giving it another melee on another one of the cups that are sort of depositories there. Third and finally, we have another mirror that we're going to rotate with a bullet gun. We're going to shoot at with our gauntlet. We're going to melee the charge that's stored in the cup, and then we're going to run over to the shrine, and we're going to place it down and finish this part of the process. You'll see three lights converge on each other, and a portal will open up, allowing you to travel through to the challenge of Hamira. This one's pretty easy. You'll be standing on a big brass mirror, which is very fitting, and this charged effect is pretty damn cool. You'll just be beaming down on absolutely everything, just holding that thing down. And it really is fun to use. Like, I really like this one personally. Then once about 30 seconds to a minute have passed, you'll be all done, you'll return, and you'll have your upgraded Gauntlet of Hamira. The next two gauntlets are both found in the Underworld area. So we're going to take the Fast Travel or Pegasus over to that area. Obviously, you might find some dormant hands in that area as well, and you're going to need a dormant hand for each of these gauntlets. The first gauntlet we'll look at is the Gauntlet of Ouroboros, or the Wind Gauntlet. This one's in the center of the world, right in front of the Omphalos. You're going to need to go up to it with your dormant hand and hold square to initiate the little lockdown sequence. After about 15 seconds, that will complete. Then we're going to use the Gauntlet of Ouroboros to push zombie corpses into three arrows, which are in various areas of the underworld that we're currently moving around in. This sounds a little weird, so I'll take a little time to explain it. There's an arrow here, for example, that you can see sticking into the massive woman behind Pack-a-Punch, and we're going to use the gauntlet to push a regular zombie up into the air, and its ragdolled body will then hit the arrow. The arrow will vibrate, and a feather will come out, and this feather needs to be shot twice with the gauntlet. One of the feathers actually only needs to be shot once, but it doesn't hurt to shoot twice. Twice is safe. What we're doing by shooting that blue feather with the gauntlet is we're ushering it towards the Shrine of Ouroboros. Once you've shot it twice, you're absolutely going to be A-OK, -okay, and you can move on to the next arrow. Here is another arrow, speaking of which, which we're going to shoot another zombie at, and if you hit the arrow with a zombie, another feather will fly out, and you'll need to again shoot at it twice with your gauntlet in order to push that feather in the direction you need it towards the Shrine of Ouroboros. Finally, here is a third arrow, and we're going to be doing the same thing, pushing a zombie into it using our gauntlet, and that vibration causing a feather to come out, which we can usher to the Shrine of Ouroboros by shooting it twice with the gauntlet. With that done, you can simply go back to the shrine, hold square on the portal that's just appeared, and you'll be able to complete the challenge of Ouroboros. This is really easy because you basically have a permanent thunder gun for about 30 seconds. It's great, and this is a really fun ability to use. I just wish that in practice it drained a little less ammo, but 
Who knows, maybe that will change in a patch. Anyway, once you come back, you'll have access to your upgraded Gauntlet of Ouroboros, and now we've only got one Gauntlet left. The fourth and final gauntlet we'll be looking at is the gauntlet of Sharon, or Charon, depending on how you pronounce it. This one, I think, is the trickiest one to upgrade. A dormant hand needs to be brought to the Shrine of Charon, obviously, and once you submit it to the Shrine of Charon, you'll do a lockdown, just like you do with all the other gauntlets. Then when that lockdown is complete, you'll have access to the gauntlet for you to use, and you'll need to bring it up to the River Styx, which is right in front of the Odin perk in this area. You need to get 10 kills or so with the gauntlet in the River Styx, and by doing so, you will be sucking zombies down into the river. When this is completed, you'll be able to drink from the River Styx, and this is going to create a new visual effect on your screen. As you run around the underworld, you'll see that with this visual effect on, there are coins littered around which are highlighted, and you need to run over to those coins and hold square. Some of the coins are going to be the ones that you're looking for, and they will make a dinging sound, and other coins will be fakes, and those will simply extinguish and no longer glow when you hold square on them. You can run around the entirety of this area just looking for coins. There are three that you need, and once you've got three, you don't need to keep extinguishing the fake coins. All you need to do is bring those three coins all the way back to the shrine itself, and that will open the portal for you. I'm going to take a second here just to show you a couple of extra coin locations because there are quite a few of these things, but they're highlighted so clearly that I reckon you should be absolutely fine finding these yourself. And so with that done and with the coin submitted to the Shrine of Karen, we're going to be teleporting into the little challenge. This is, I think, the hardest challenge of them all simply because you're in quite a restricted area and the time that it takes for the charged shot of this gauntlet to actually take zombies out can be a little unnerving when you're in such a tight space. So you're going to have to be on your toes for this one. Make sure you're spamming that charged shot. And also, don't be afraid to use the single shot if you need to, because remember, you've got unlimited ammo. You're not meant to die during this thing. It's meant to be a little trial of the gauntlet for you to see if you like it. Once 30 seconds to a minute have passed, you've killed a load of zombies, you'll pop right out and you'll have access to your fourth upgraded gauntlet. And at this point, you have all four redeemed gauntlets. So you're well on the way, if you want to, to getting started with the Easter egg, or just tearing through some of the rounds because all of these things are really strong. You can also get a bunch of max ammos from the Oracle in this game, and so even though the ammo on these things seems like it's fairly low, you can supplement it by doing those tribute challenges. Hopefully this has been a useful guide for you guys. I've tried to keep it nice and snappy while being as informative as needed. Thanks for watching, drop a like if you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you very soon in more Ancient Evil or Black Ops 4 Zombies videos. Bye for now.